Hi everyone, um, really great to be here this evening. Um, it feels like I've just come to be part of the family um, that Georgie and Jeff set up. Um, the way I got to be part of this family by, was by emailing Georgie every week for about three months, asking to let her talk, let me talk at this event, and she kindly said, <laughs> she kindly said I could. How do I work? So, so what I wanted to talk to you about this evening is, um, is sort of my take on how to deal with mental health. So I. Um, my life's been defined by one thing, which is to turn my mental health into a game. And I decided I wanted to make it into a game that I was going to try and li was going to live a life I love. And this happened to me, um, what six years ago now was when I really decided I wanted to take this game on. I've been, I'd just gone through university. I just moved to the slide. I find this slide quite interesting because it's got all my credentials here. But actually, my story is nothing like that. My story is actually someone who. Um, failed their degree, um, was having panic attacks the whole way through, three or four a day, couldn't talk to people in the street, was just you know, sweating, everything. It was, it was horrible. And then I went and got a job at RBC as a temp, and I got fired after six months. And then, <laughs> so, yeah. and, then I'm now, and then I thought, well, what am I going to do in my life? And I started playing this game. And that game has turned into entrepreneurship. It's turned into spreading my story as much as I can. Um, so... The game I want to talk about today is um, just a simple game that you can play in your businesses. I think it could impact every business in the world. Um, and first of all, I just want to do a little exercise, which is alongside this game. So just with all of you, with your partners, um, I'd like you to ask each other this question. And because for time's sake, um, I'm going to ask the person with the shortest, per shortest hair to ask the questions. Um, just... Just so, um, I talk, I'm just going to talk you through these questions. So say I was answering these questions. Today, um, I have my, my friend Max is here, and um, he asked me a question, is there anything you want to get off your chest? And I was like, I'm really nervous. I'm doing this talk at Minds at Work this evening. And he was like, okay, so what are you going to do about that? And I was like, I'm going to tell them all that I'm really nervous in my talk. And then he was like, is there anything I can do to support you with that? And I was like, yeah, can you just listen to me moan for like five minutes? <laughs> and the beautiful thing was, like, by the end of it, I felt great. And then I've got to sit here this evening and enjoy it. So, yeah, I just want you to do this exercise with each other. Um, you're getting to do it for one minute, and then we'll come back, right? So, go for it now. Okay, can I bring everyone back? Is everyone back in? Okay, so we're going to come back to this later. But for now, I just want to talk about something, how I feel about mental health. So I believe we all have mental health. Um, first of all, hands up anyone that has ever been unhappy. Okay. Um, Hands, hands up anyone who's ever worried about anything. Anyone that's ever felt under pressure. Okay, so I'm now going to give you the NHS definitions of depression, anxiety, and stress. So depression is consistent unhappiness or hopelessness. Anxiety is consistent fear or worry. And stress is consistent feeling of being under too much pressure. So what I want to illustrate here is it's just when you get to mental illness, it's just a matter of consistent thoughts and we all experience these at some point so this consistency is getting is is taking its toll it's getting to be an epidemic there's one in four people that will be diagnosed with a mental health issue this year and one in six are experiencing one right now if this is a room of 80 people maths there we go that's going to be what 12 of us are experiencing something right now so why is this happening it's happening because the world is moving at a fast pace we've got information overload, like the amount of thoughts that are constantly going through our head, just filling up our heads the whole time. Like, I am always experiencing this, just how I have so many things on my mind, you know, it's work, it's how my mum's doing, it's how my brother's doing in America, it's how my friends are doing, it's um, am I any good at what I'm doing, am I going to be Mark Zuckerberg in the future because I really want to be him, but I also want to be Leonardo DiCaprio, oh wait, no, hang on, Tony Robbins, I can't remember. You know, it's like all of these thoughts are going around my head and there's constant pressure from everything that's, all this information that's being given to us. So, I just want to introduce you to Jack. 
Jack's a really nice guy, I found on Google that. Um, <laughs> and um, so Jack here, you know, he's got the normal thoughts going in his head, the ones that I just described. Then Jack, if he doesn't start processing his thoughts, very quickly gets to a situation where they start building up. And building up, and building up, and building up. Now, the exercise we did a minute ago was about getting one of those thoughts out of our heads. I don't know what everyone picked in the room, but like I said, you know, mine was about worrying about being here today. It could have been about the deadlines I have this week. It could have been about um, <laughs> why it's raining, or why it's so sunny, or whatever it is. So, what I want you to realize is that in the companies that you're working in, there are so many people like this. There's, everyone has their own story, everyone has their own thoughts. There's Jack struggling to handle pressure. There's Anushka with performance anxiety. There's Sandra feeling hopeless and lost. Marcus going through a divorce. And it's getting, it's getting to a stage where it's happening so much like one in three sick notes and now as a result of mental health issues. That's a ridiculous amount, like a ridiculous amount. So this is the game I'm gonna propose that people should start playing. And I think the game should be say no to I'm fine. So we've, we have this question in our society, how are you? And it's no longer become about how are you? It's become you know, like a nicety that we just say to each other. So it's how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. And then you move on, you talk about the football, you talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. But no one's actually processing thoughts as it was designed. So my solution is that businesses start promoting that people should actually do this process properly. You take Jack here. I'll run you through the conversation. Hey Jack, how you doing? I'm Jack. So I'm yeah, I'm fine. If I was then to actually take the action and say, do you know what, Jack? You know the game, this game that we're playing in this business. Is there anything you want to get off your chest? Jack then is dealing with the three deadlines a week. Jack's like, yeah, do you know what? I've got three deadlines this week and I'm sort of struggling with what to do about it. And you're like, okay, so are there any actions you're going to take, Jack? Jack then has to go through the process of, of processing that thought that's in his head. He may or may not come up with an answer, but say he does, he stands and goes, do you know what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Shelly, my boss. I'm going to speak to her about the three deadlines I've got, and I'm going to try and move one to next week. All of a sudden, that's, that pressure's gone. He's found a solution. He may say no, in which case then I can go, is there anything I can support you with? And, he can then, uh, and then it starts that engagement. So why are these questions so powerful? Um, firstly, we all know the situation, as I've already explained. It's how are you? I'm fine. And you say, I'm fine, even when it's terrible, your head's going crazy. You're thinking about all the things that are going on, you know, you're, uh, <laughs> I was chatting to my intern today and he was like, so my house is burnt down and um, my mum no longer talks to me, but I'm fine, but I'm fine. <laughs> and that's, that is what's going on in people's heads, right? And so you ask this one question, it just gives them the opportunity to speak and just gives them that opportunity. It makes them feel like someone actually cares, that one chance to say something. So then they get the opportunity to say what they're going to say. And then this question about what's the plan, how are you going to, what's your plan to deal with it? Having that, having that plan, putting that into action, processes that thought. And then the support question gives that person that second opportunity. So, um, in terms of your business, you've seen this on an individual level. Imagine if this question is going out throughout your business, okay? the impact that's going to have. You're going to create a culture where it's constantly relieving stress, one interaction at a time, constantly deflating, constantly taking stress out of you. It's contagious. Let's say, let's say there's just two people in the office that want to do it to start off, and they're the annoying guys that are like, oh, let's play the game, come on, let's play the game. And no one really wants to play the game. But then the third person plays the game, and a fourth person, and a fifth person. And all of a sudden, so many people are starting to understand this process of processing your thoughts, getting the things out there and being able to talk to them with the people around them. So, sorry, I'm just gonna slow down a sec, I just realized talking so fast. <laughs> um, okay, so what are the keys to making this work in your business? First one, I believe, and I believe this is the thing, and, and I just love the idea of games because you take it away from being so serious. How many people know that when the mental health thing gets talked about at work, most of the people turn up, oh, that's not me. I'm not that interested, uh, like, I don't need to do this, I'm okay, I'm fine, like, they don't want to admit it. But if you suddenly turn it into a game about something completely different, maybe about creating com community in the office, or about performance, about collaboration as a team, 
suddenly frame it as it's a marketing exercise, but you frame it as something different. All of a sudden people are going, oh yeah, do you know what, I might jump into that. And the action happens and the process works on people without actually it being a mental health initiative. The second thing is repetition. To make this work, it's got to be, it's got to be hit home. It's got to be, it's something that's going to be on screensavers. You can put it on posts in the office. This game, it's say no to I'm fine. It's something you want people to constantly engage with. Um, and then finally, it's the top down bottom up. I think um, Jeff said something really interesting when he started this evening. It's how the leaders have got to speak and, and also owners as well, actually. Um, it's about the leaders, the leaders being the ones that start this. The leaders are the ones asking the questions in the elevator, in the cafeteria, in the meetings, starting this conversation. And then you also work from the bottom. You go and speak to the grads. Imagine if you trained every single grad that came to your company. I've been that grad. That 22-year-old comes to the company and says, like, I'll do whatever you tell me. I'll, I'll take it on, I'll take it on. And all of a sudden, five years, 10 years down the line, you've got most of your company believe that this is a normal practice in the workplace. It's, it's so simple. So I'm sitting here and it's, you know, you could be like, well, there's, there's difficulties around there and there is no silver bullet with mental health. Like, I, in my, in my time, what, six years ago, it's, it's been a lot of like games and it's been a lot of repetition and a lot of working on how to deal with the thoughts that have gone in my head. Deal with the panic attacks, deal with the, deal with the, um, the negative thoughts and all of these things. But you know, it's, it's, it's by just building these blocks and having people around me. I found that having as many people around me as possible that kept checking in and seeing how it was, was the best way that I could do it. I'm lucky I've built a company that now has 10 people that sit around me and are always like, how you doing? How you doing? You know, like the whole thing. It's, it like, it, and it just works. Like our environment is, I just love it because everyone gets to deal with their problems all the time. It's like we've done our own micro experiment and now we want to share it with the world. So, yeah, that's in, I think that was really quick. <laughs> um, that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. I just want to share this idea that you can do, which is to go through this process with, within your companies. I would love to, you know, talk to anyone about this. Like we, we've started, within uh, the Smart Tribe, we're, we're, we're an incubator and we've started a lot of different projects. We run events, um, <coughs> Letty here runs our events. We've got, um, we're working with some companies doing workshops. We also, um, my background's all tech and there's a big side to our thing, which is we're building an AI coach, which helps people process their thoughts in exactly the way that we're talking about. Um, but you know, I'd love anyone to get in contact with me, whether it was, about stuff in the office, whether they were interested in participating in some of our early trials like coaching, or just you know wanted to talk, you're like, I've got something to talk about. I just I just want to get something like that. So yeah, um, I promised Georgie I'd do my top tips. So this is off on a tangent, but here they are. Um, so my top tips are to talk about the things in your head um, as much as possible, whenever you can. Like be relentless about it. I find that with all of my stuff. With entrepreneurship, with all the business, everything that I do, when I talk about everything that's going on in my head, like it's con everything's constantly improving, constantly, I'm constantly solving problems, constantly solving problems. And the moment I stop and do that thing where I lie in my bed for a bit or watch an extra program on Netflix or just avoid what's going on in my head, the problems start coming. And I've now just got to a situation where I'm like, I'm just going to say everything that comes to my mind. Like it's I, probably quite annoying. For everyone around me because they're like why is he always talking <laughs> even when no one's listening but it really really helps like it's it's like it's amazing i i can't believe if you told me six years ago that when i was sat there in my room having i couldn't leave the house because having so many panic attacks i couldn't talk to any more than two people at a time because it was just it was just there was a no-go um i i was suicidal for over a year like i you told me that i'd be here today and my life was a game and that I was loving it the whole time, and that all I had to do was just keep talking about what was going on in my head, like, I would not have believed you. But I promise you it's true. I, I promise you it's true. There's so much, there's, there's other things you will learn along the way, but by talking and getting this out, it makes such a difference. So, top tip number one. Top tip number two is laugh about the thoughts you have. Um, I, uh, I recently, so I haven't been in a relationship for a long time, I've recently just got into a relationship and the way I did it was talking about all the stupid things that were going on in my head and causing anxiety about getting in a relationship. And you know, like I took the same process and it was actually incredible. So I realised that I was worried about the fact that um, 
the girl that I was seeing, if we broke up in four years' time um, and she couldn't have kids, then would she blame that on me? I was worried about the fact that when I go to Rome, which I haven't got tickets to, that maybe um, I might go to this hotel with this really stunning brunette girl that might want to sleep with me, and I wouldn't be able to do that if I got in a relationship. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. And, you know, like, these thoughts are ridiculous, but this is what goes on in your head. And I was laughing because I actually sat in my kitchen like, why is this happening in my head? <laughs> and, um, like... I actually did this process on that, on that issue. So not necessarily what you think is a mental health related issue, right? But I did this process and I spent a whole weekend saying everything to everyone. And people were just, you must have thought it was crazy. But it worked. At the end of the weekend, I was in a, I managed to commit to this girl that I think is incredible. Um, and I just hadn't been able to two, three days before. So yeah, um, talk about stuff and laugh about it as well. Like, just get insignificant about it, you know? Um, but the other thing is, this is not necessary to help itself, but it does big time, but is get interested in other people. Like the more interested you are in them, the more that they're going to be able to get their thoughts out, and then you get ideas off them, and then the whole cycle goes round and round and round. We just create a culture where people are talking, getting their thoughts out over and over again. And it's like, and then there's freedom in that. So, yeah, and then my fourth one actually, which isn't up there, and I was coming in today, is just make it all a game. Like, Play as many games as possible. I play the game of, in our business at the moment, we've got, play the game of get to 10,000 followers on YouTube. Play the game of building um, building a tech product and having 100,000 users. Play the game, like, I literally do it with everything. Play the game of going on a date song. Play the game of emailing Georgie every time for three months until she lets me talk about the work. Like, it's all become a game as opposed to being like really serious in my head. It used to be not fun. There was no smarts. It was not a game at all. It was, Significant, angry, disappointed, um, miserable, sad, like lonely, really, like, really, really lonely. And like that can kind of shift with making a game and getting things out of the head. Anyway, thank you very much for listening.